since we're now officially in October, oh wait, hold on, hold on. There we go. Since we're now officially in October, also known as Spooky Month, I'd like to think back to some of the greatest horror games that I've played over the years. True horror experiences that got a genuine scare out of me. Games like Silent Hill, Doom 3, Dead Space, Alien Isolation, Resident Evil 7, and so many, many more. And in a world where horror games went from these atmospheric, claustrophobic environments to dull, by the numbers, jump scare infested YouTube fodder, Going back to some horror classics, both old and new, feels like such a breath of fresh air. Halo is a first person shooter taking place in an extraordinarily vibrant universe, but it definitely has some aspects that could transition very well into a horror title. And that's what I and my giant pumpkin mask would like to talk about today. I really, really want a Halo horror game. I'm not talking about extreme gore or something over the top, I'm talking more about something that fits in with what Halo is. The extended Halo universe is something that I love, and in between those long waits for new games, there's nothing that really quenches my thirst for story other than sitting down and reading into the extended universe. And my primary example today is going to be a short story from the graphic Halo novel named The Last Voyage of the Infinite Sucker, and that's because I believe that this story is the perfect source material to base a Halo horror game on. It's been described as a chance to do a bit of an origin story for the Spec Ops commander Ratas Vadomi, showing why he knows what the floods smell like, how he received his distinctive injury, and perhaps why he felt he was able to speak in such a familiar tone with the Arbiter. The intro also describes the story as a piece conceived primarily as a vehicle to educate the fans about the real danger of the flood, that they are a rapacious, intelligent, goal-oriented life form with an internal structure slash protoculture. I think this story is important to be aware of, so I'm going to describe the events to you with some visuals from the graphic novel itself. And a huge shout out to Toa Freak, aka Halo Cannon, for supplying me with a digital copy of the book. Thank you very much. The last voyage of the Infinite Sucker begins around the same time as the Master Chief entering the Flood Containment Facility in Halo CE. A spirit dropship clumsily makes its way back to and aggressively boards the Infinite Sucker. A few grunts try to warn the rest of the ship of the danger, but they are violently killed before they can effectively do so. On board the Seeker of Truth, Ratas Vadomi meets with the Supreme Commander Thel Vadomi, where he is informed that the Infinite Sucker has been boarded. Ratas and his team set off to stop the presumed human attack, secure the ship, and rescue the Legate. Upon arriving at the ship, Ratas and his team discover blood and human footprints, with the team questioning if humans were even capable of such barbaric slaughter. They continue into a hunting preserve and find nothing alive save for one lifeform, identifying it as a parasite. They're soon overrun and are forced to move to the bridge where they discover that the Legate has disabled orders for the ship's self-destruct protocols. The Legate, confirming a flood infestation and fearing infection, refuses to meet with the team unless they are scanned in the medical bay. After a brutal fight, they manage to reach their goal and make it back to the Legate, now revealed to be the Minister of Etiology, who explains more about the flood and how it likely intends to use the slip space drive to escape the system. After a brief conversation, Ratas concludes that the Minister is far more concerned with his own safety rather than the safety of the Covenant overall, and violently reminds him of his place. Vadami takes three elites with him to engineering whilst his subcommander Bero Kusovai leads the remaining team members and the Minister to a phantom. After a violent battle with an overwhelming flood force, Vadomi is the last one standing to reach engineering. We then discover that the Minister, along with Ratas's remaining team members, have all been infected by the flood, with the Minister acting as a mouthpiece for a rapidly growing proto-gravemind. The infected Kusovai then attacks Vadomi and severs his left mandibles before being killed by the commander. Realising that there is no realistic way for him to stop the Flood alone, Ratar sets the ship on a course for a nearby sun and escapes on a Phantom, leaving the Infinite Sucker and its mutated crew to burn. Before I continue, I'd like to draw attention to the style used in the imagery, particularly when the Flood-infected creatures are being shown. The mixed colours from the torn flesh and blood, along with these horribly twisted faces and bodies, really showcase what the authors set out to do. The artists did not shy away from the blood and gore you would expect from a parasitic lifeform distorting, mutating, and fusing creatures together. And the arrival on the ship feels uneasy. You as the reader know that something horrible has happened here, but with these characters you get to see just how bad things have gotten in such a short amount of time. It's oddly atmospheric, it tells a great story, and the impressive art only complements it. 
In a sense, it reminds me of the first Dead Space, which is one of my all-time favourite horror experiences. In a weird way, Dead Space and Infinite Sucker are very similar stories minus a few details. A horrific infestation has taken hold of a ship and a team are dispatched to solve the problem, with the only difference here being that Rattas and his team were warriors while Isaac Clarke and his team were engineers, and they were sent to repair damaged comms, so how do you think they felt? In both stories, an interfering character forces each group to accomplish goals before allowing them to progress, like Dr. Kine and Chalice Mercer in Dead Space and the Minister in The Last Voyage. Both the Ishimura and the Infinite Sucker are shown to be eerily devoid of life, giving off a very uneasy vibe in both stories. As the story progresses, character numbers start to dwindle as they are all killed off by the Flood slash Necromorph infection, and of course, both the Ishimura and the Infinite Sucker become more dangerous as the infection spreads across the ship. If you've played Dead Space and have also read this story, you'll know about these similarities. In fact, I think you could get a great sense for how this game could look if you think back to some of these reference materials. Take the infected corridors of High Charity for example. With the fleshy walls oozing blood and other fluids, the remains of previous ship inhabitants spread across different decks, completely butchered or even partially infected or in the process of the biomass attempting to absorb them. And since in the stories the characters are tasked with going to different areas of the ship for different reasons, right there is the mission structure. Each area could get progressively more infected as the story goes on, just like in Dead Space. Another thing that I loved about this story was how they chose to represent the intelligence of the Flood. Obviously the creature towards the end wasn't a full-blown Gravemind, but it still had a primal motivation to spread and grow whilst threatening and possibly even taunting Rattas with the knowledge that his entire team were now part of it. My interpretation of the way the Legate Flood creature spoke is exactly how I see it presented in the graphic novel, in short, guttural growls using extremely basic English to get its point across. And I think that's the best way the Flood intelligence could have been presented in this story in a creepy way. Take the Gravemind for example. I love this character and its design, but it almost suffers from the same problem as the Warden Eternal in that it doesn't shut up when it really should. This wasn't much of an issue in Halo 2 since the Gravemind's dialogue was mostly handled in cinematics, but in Halo 3 with the Gravemind and Cortana moments that slowed down the gameplay, it got very old. I think that representing the Flood as this monstrous force with somewhat limited intelligence was the right way to go for this story, because it portrays it in a way in a much more feral state, making it even more dangerous and unpredictable. Having the Legate Flood creature speak perfect English would have lessened the impact in my opinion. So if this was to ever make it into game form, I'd say that one of the biggest things they'd need to nail is this moment in the story and make sure that it is absolutely faithful to the source material. But what about music? Because Halo is known for its amazing soundtracks, but I don't think that a traditional Halo soundtrack would work with this. My suggestion for this would be to substitute most traditional music and replace it with ambient, sharp tracks that enhance that atmospheric feeling of loneliness and unease. Something that I think would also be great to see would be quiet moments in between the fights and collectibles. Much like in Dead Space, when wandering around the deserted Ishimura, you'll be attacked by necromorph forces, but in between those fights, you'll experience moments where it's just you and the eerie silence, creaks and maybe even scratches, roars and footsteps. This kind of thing really enhances that fear of the unknown aspect of the experience and it keeps players on their toes. For collectibles, this is Halo. You could have some Covenant lore audio logs littered around the ship. The Infinite Sucker has a large dome with a hunting preserve. There could be a few tidbits of lore on the alien creatures found within the terminals. You could have species names, planets of origins, all kinds of things. There are a lot of things to consider really, but in my opinion, the the biggest one is about the designs and the gore. Just take a look at these pages. They don't skimp on the detail and the gore for the flood infected creatures and violence. If this story were to ever transition into a game, this stuff needs to stay in. This would not be a Halo game for younger audiences. It would be a full-blown horror experience that was as graphic as necessary because as the authors of the original story stated, this was to educate people on the true dangers of the Flood and how aggressive they are. And one last thing that I would like to suggest for anybody out there who's willing to put some time into getting the same kind of vibe that I'm imagining for this game. If you've never tried either, please allow yourself some time to play either Dead Space 1 or watch the 1982 movie John Carpenter's The Thing. Both are excellent examples of how this could be done because both of them showcase what is necessary to make something like this work. Atmosphere, pacing, shock, story, gore, it all connects and it all works together. I mentioned before that I wanted to see more kid-friendly Halo experiences like the cancelled Megablox project, 
but I would also love to see a more adult Halo themed horror game. It sounds like you're asking for Dead Space Halo Edition, sir. Yes, that's exactly what he's after. You both dishonor me, I shall stab you with me stabber. With all that said, I'd like to thank my current patrons for their support, including GamerChat, Jay Laughlin, Curry-Chan, Paul Prospero, Rainbow Dawn, Rook, Rosilla42, see, I told you I'd get it right this time, Sammy A. Nielsen, and Wolfric Productions. If you would like to support this channel on Patreon, please check the link in the description. But honestly, what is your opinion on this? What do you think? And also, what do you think about my pumpkin costume? Do you think it's scary? See, I'm only asking because I was going to go with this white sheet to be a ghost or something, but that quickly fell through after I realized that my helmet had a pointed tip. And I think you can figure out why I didn't want to portray myself wearing a white pointed sheet. Anyways, let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.